In this quick DaVinci Resolve editing tutorial, I'm going to teach you the best settings to use when exporting your videos. It will keep the file sizes small and the quality will remain high. If you're new here, we have over 200 videography related videos, so lots of content for you to learn from. And if you want to know any of the music or the gear we use to make our videos, all links are in the description. Let's jump in. With Resolve open, I have four clips loaded into the timeline. I'm on the edit page. And these are 4K clips that uh, were actually time lapses that I filmed. And for what I'm showing you today, we don't need anything fancy. This is about a minute long of footage. The first thing you wanna know is what your resolution timeline is. So up here, we have all 4K media. And naturally we want our timeline to be the same. Once we know what our source resolution is and what our timeline is, we can then start to think about where we want to upload our video or where we wanna use our final export. Let's say I wanna use these clips in a future edit and I want them to be in a high quality, but I don't want them to take up a huge amount of space. So the best option for that would be H.265, which I'll show you in a second, or if you want the absolute highest quality, but much larger file sizes, you can go with something like ProRes. So let's go over to deliver. This is where we export. And up at the top here, we have a whole bunch of presets, but we will create our own. And you can name your file accordingly. For us, these are Toronto time lapses. And then location, you of course can do that to where you wanna save it on your computer. Under the video tab, our format, we're gonna change this to MP4. The codec, we're going to select H.265 if we want the highest quality with the smallest file size. But keep in mind H.265 is a much heavier codec to work with. So if you do export footage and wanna edit with it later, you do need to have a decently fast computer to do that. Where traditionally H.264 is what people have most likely used for a couple decades and it's much easier for your system to work with. Since I'm on a modern Mac, I'm going to choose H.265 and I do wanna keep on hardware acceleration if possible, that will speed things up. For resolution, I wanna make sure that my timeline does say you know, my 4K resolution or whatever my source media is. My frame rate will match my timeline, so we'll leave this as it is. Now for quality, you can keep it at automatic if you don't understand bit rates and you just want it to perform well. But to give you some context and to teach you a bit, the kilobits per second is, that's 80,000 kilobits per second or 80 megabits per second. That amount of data happens every second. So in other words, if you are at 24 frames per second, that means the file size will end up being 80 megabytes or 80,000 kilobits per second or per 24 frames of footage. Now, obviously, if your export is very long, that can add up quickly. However, this technically is still tiny in file size compared to what like ProRes would be. And I would say that 80,000 kilobits is actually too much for H.265. Most uh, 4K footage will look really good around 30,000 or 40,000 kilobits. So I would recommend going around 50,000 if it's just like a tutorial. But if you have like sports clips or in my case, time lapses, you might wanna bump that up to like 60,000 or 70,000. But again, most 4K footage will look perfect around 40,000 kilobits per second or 40 megabits per second. All right, we'll keep that at 60,000 kilobits a second because I have fast moving time lapses. And then for encoding profile, if you filmed on a camera that supports 10 bit, which most higher end cameras do, then you wanna change this from main 10 to 42210. That will ensure your color sampling, 10 bit and all that will be kept the same in your export. And regarding the multi-passing code, I've found that this isn't really necessary for H.265. Now, if you were working with H.264, I would highly suggest doing the uh, multi-passing coding because during the second pass, it will help reduce video noise when there's transitions or areas in your footage that are darker. But H.265 is such a fantastic codec. It's really, really good at compression. So I have found that we don't need to check that. Everything else is okay. We can go over to audio. Compressing to AAC is perfectly fine with a decently high bit rate here. Once that's set up, you can go up to the three dots at the top and go to save as new preset. You can call it 4K H.265 HQ for high quality. 
You can choose any icon you want and then you want to add to quick export and click save. Therefore, right at the top, we have our new preset and it'll default to that whenever we want to export. This preset is what we use for pretty much everything, whether we're uploading to YouTube or if we are saving some B-roll for future videos. However, we typically don't use this preset when working with providing videos for clients because of the H.265 being so process heavy. In that case, we want to prioritize compatibility across devices. And in that case, we switch the MP4 to H.264. Everything else is the same, except in this case, for quality, we wanna understand what the client will be using the video for. Maybe it's just like a first draft uh, video that we're providing to them and they're not uploading it as a final. Then in that case, we could reduce this to let's say 25,000 or maybe even like 15,000 and change it from 4K to 1080p. But if it is their final video and they do want it in 4K, we can set this to around 80,000. But again, if you're working with like sports footage or footage like this, then you might even want to go as high as like 120,000 or 150,000. Yes, the file sizes will be much larger, but that is required to get a high quality image at 4K with the H.264 uh, codec. And then as mentioned, we do want to make sure that the multipass is selected. Under audio, everything will be the same as the other codec because it is audio, not video. So then we can save this as a preset. So we'll set this up to, let's say, 120,000. And we'll save that as 4K H.264 HQ. Add to quick export. So now we have two options. So H.264 and our H.265. Beyond that, if you do run a video production company or you are working with an agency, they may request that you deliver the footage in ProRes. And in that case, you would need to go back to QuickTime. Under the codec, choose Apple ProRes. And then depending on the camera you worked with, you're either gonna choose 422 HQ or the 4444 options. And because ProRes is an uncompressed codec, that means there's no compression, you don't set the bitrate, and therefore there's no settings really to uh, set up. Because of that, you actually don't need to create a preset because the preset here for ProRes does exist. However, depending on the camera you're working with, you might want to go with the 4444 or if you want to export an alpha channel. So we'll go back and choose our H.265. We will add our file to the render queue. We'll choose a location to save it. Then we can hit render all and we are done. That is how you export a high quality video out of DaVinci Resolve. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos from us in the future. We have over 200 videography related videos, so lots of content for you to learn from. And if you wanna know any of the music or the gear we use to make our videos, all links are in the description. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.